Lunch break! <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! Where are we? Hey guys, lunch break is back. Welcome to a brand new set. Wow, man, like where are we? We're on the main channel. Yeah, you're not on the wrong channel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Some people watching might not even know what this is. This is our weekly talk show lunch break, which is usually on the second channel. I'm like really wondering how many people watching actually have no idea what this show is. Yeah, we have a second channel, guys. It's called More Wong Fu. For almost four years now, we've been wow. eating lunch every week. There's almost 200 episodes yeah. on there. Every Thursday, we would eat with you guys and we talk about a variety of topics. It's one of our favorite things to do. Obviously, we like to eat, but it's a big moment for us, which is why we brought it on the main channel today. We didn't just bring it on the main channel. We also brought it on a new podcast. But it's going to go back to the second channel next week, every Thursday, lunch break. In case you guys didn't know, uh, we actually took a break uh, because we moved offices and we built a brand new set for our lunch break show because- It's needed it. Yeah. Have you seen the last lunch break set? It was just a window. In the corner. But I think this is way better. Yeah. So Jen and Benson, like it. yeah, you guys worked really hard on it and this is beautiful. It was actually a lot of fun because they revealed it to all of us because they, when it was in progress, we couldn't see what was going on. Except some of y'all cheated. But this episode that we keep saying is really special, not only because of the new set, but also because we want to talk about some pretty serious things. It's very rare that, you know, us as a group get together and have this kind of format where we can just like casually talk to you guys on the main channel. But we see the comments and we know that there's a lot of questions about Wong Fu in general. Um, and we've, we've addressed them on other lunch breaks. We've addressed them on tweets or on Instagram lives or whatever. Or even on tour when we're at live events. Right. But never here. So let's just get into it. First question is what happened to Wong Fu Weekends? You guys really miss it. If you guys don't know what Wong Fu Weekends is. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like five years since we've had an episode of that. Okay, Wong Fu Weekends um, was a vlog series that was on this channel. And we did that because at the time of YouTube, like a lot of people were like doing like daily vlogging and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, our channel is very much based on short films and sketches and we, you know, you can't make a, a short every week. So we thought, okay, let's do like a vlog series. You know, we brought people in to the life of Wang Fu. Yeah, and it's technically the first time the fans got to know you guys as people. Yeah. Bill, Wes, right. and Ted specifically. Yeah. Let's list off some of our episodes. We Churros with Natalie Tran. Natalie Tran came to visit. We took her to Costco. Dude, I can name all of them right now. Jen, go. Jen's a big <laughs> fan. Is that when you first started watching us? Yeah. But we made over 100 episodes. That's crazy. But yeah, in 2014, we stopped. And know what? It's good. No, it's good. <laughs> we did stop. Um, but partially because we noticed all our time was being you know, spent on figuring out these weekly Wong Fu Weekends episodes when in our heart, we were like, we need to make short films. We need to write and direct short films for you guys because that's what Wong Fu is known for. We love doing all the, um, you know, casual personality stuff, but, you know, telling the short stories is where we, we wanted to focus. Well, it's also because we, we shot a movie. We wanted, to, we wanted to go shoot a movie and that kind of like set a tone of like, okay, we need to do these bigger projects. Right. We need to focus on storytelling. But we still try to keep the, like the spirit of like the casual personality stuff alive by launching the, you know, the second channel, taking that more seriously. We had a bunch of shows, yeah, on the second channel, like First, Recess, uh, Failed It, which were all basically Wong Fu Weekends episodes without the Wong Fu Weekend name. The branding was so strong with Wong Fu Weekends that everyone just wanted that. But we were still doing the same stuff. I have a theory. People say, oh, bring it back, bring it back. Honestly, like, people just have the nostalgia factor of like, oh, I remember watching Wong Fu Weekends. And I think it's better if we leave it at that as, as this like pure great moment in your life instead of bringing it back and ha and people are feeling like, oh. Trying to make it what it was. Yeah, that's not what I re remember. The decision to start lunch break was a solution to the fatigue of Wang Fu weekends. You know, it was like, oh, they still want to see us talk and hang out, but we have to do it more frequently where it's not as draining for us to like go out and like someday, think of ideas. Yeah, someday this show might end and people will be like, <laughs> I miss lunch break. Sorry, should I not have said that? Too early. <laughs> On the first day of our new <laughs> set. <laughs> Don't worry, this set bought us like another like couple years, guys. So that's pretty much it. Wong Fu weekends might be gone, but mm -hmm. you can still find us and us doing activities and hanging out on the second channel and on this show. Yeah. Is Wong Fu just for Asians? Oh my gosh. You know what, this question always comes up too when we show team mm -hmm. on the first channel. Oh, yeah. 
I think for a portion of the audience that has subscribed to the second channel, they just know who we are. Yeah. But the main channel doesn't see us very frequently. So when they see the, that face and the team members, they're like, wait, it's a lot of Asians. They're all Asian. <laughs> Whoa. Or even the behind the scenes videos when you see the whole crew, yeah. like almost all the crew members we have are Asian. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of our content um, does feature Asians as leads, you know? We've talked about this like extensively on our second channel and on tour and stuff. No, Wong Fu is not just for Asians, okay? So where are you going? No, stay here. <laughs> Come out. At the same time, we're also very proud that we can be a resource and a destination for Asian representation on YouTube. In terms of like employment and like, you know, and, and the staff here, Asians are just the only ones that are applying. We can't help it. That. I'll, I'll also say that there's so few uh, Asians that are working in this industry and in creative industry in general that, you know, if we can be a place to foster that, like, why not? I think you mentioned like when you started, you didn't mean to be, you know, like the forefront of like mm. Asian American movement, but mm. you became that. And like Wang Fu has become like kind of like that role model for young Asian Americans, like even me. Growing up. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, uh, ignore yeah. that. <laughs> it really just comes down to opportunity and also resources too, right? So we like that people see us as an opportunity to create. And yeah, if you're an Asian American kid, it's really hard to find these opportunities sometimes. So of course, we're going to be like the first thing that they think of. So they're going to apply. They're going to try to get involved and stuff like that. I think if you're a non-Asian kid, you have a lot of other choices to go to and Wong Fu might not be the first place that you want to apply to or try to get involved. We don't only reach out to Asian people. Yeah. It makes me really happy to know when there's non-Asians that are sharing our work because they understand that it is beyond just the ethnicity. Right, I think one of the goals from the casting side. It really is just to create opportunity for talent and to normalize our faces. But we hope that the stories you tell and the voices and the messaging that we have is kind of more universal. Yeah. So that it does apply to a broader audience. It's, it's unfortunate that just because of our medium, when you know you see a video, the first thing you see is an Asian face that if you're non-Asian, you're gonna think, oh, this must be an Asian thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like when I go watch a movie that has, you know, white people or black people, I'm like, oh, I can't watch it. You know, like, so I feel like that's something that we want to hopefully switch in people's minds. It's like, yeah, we're Asian, but like, that doesn't mean that you won't be able to relate to us as humans, you know, or understand our stories. And I think from, uh, from the, yeah, like just going back to what Wes was saying about from the fan side, I too also, when, when we do like live events, when we have fans who are non-Asian, like, I think it's cool that they either, you know, uh, see us for our storytelling first, you know, or they actually do care about, you know, helping Asian Americans have more representation um, in media. If you have friends that don't want to watch us because they think it's an Asian thing, let them know, it's not. What happened to Single by 30? Single by 30, oh, such a good show. So Thank you. Good. I think it's funny that I, I'm really touched when people ask that because that means that they watched it. And I know that it was a very big jump for people to sign up for YouTube Red at the time. Right. Premium, as so it's called now. Let's back up a little bit. Single by 30 was a series we made and it debuted on YouTube Red, which is now YouTube Premium. But it was a eight part series. Um, Starring? Harry Shum Jr. and Kina Grannis. Uh, our two great friends and uh, amazing actors and performers. It was by far the biggest production like Wong Fu has taken on. Yeah, at the time. This came right after the movie and you know, we wanted to just, you know, keep showing that we were evolving, that we were taking on bigger things and it was a great opportunity. Yeah, definitely like the most TV-esque, Hollywood-esque way of doing things, even though it was so a fraction of the budget that real TV shows get. But yeah, we got to work with the writer's room, we got to have a big sets, um, a bunch of departments. Got billboards. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Forgot about that. It was great, you know, seeing people support and everything. Um, but at the end of the day, after season one, that was it. And we tried to do a season two, or we tried to pitch. like pitch a season two and they, and they listened to our pitch, but ultimately, um, I guess whoever was in charge there decided that um, they didn't want it. So in that sense, everything was very Hollywood too, where you, know, you never know if um, you know, your show is gonna continue or not. Right. Despite there being fans of it, despite um, you know, it being one of their you know, better performing shows, it just didn't fit their plans. And because we technically didn't own the full rights of the show, we just had to accept the fate of it. So that actually emboldened us even more to do more things on our channel. And that's actually why we, you know, made Just Another Nice Guy. That's why we made uh, Yappy the way we, we did. We wanted to show that we can make these high quality shows in series without relying 
on selling it to someone, giving up that control to them. And that is just how the industry works. Right. And that's something that we have to swallow constantly. Right. And it allows us to kind of move forward and be creative in other areas. Thank you so much to you guys that watched that series and demanded it. I think there was a movement at the time of like, <laughs> single yeah. list, the 32, you know? Like people really wanted it. Um, Speaking of season twos, what about Yappy? Mm. Yappy. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was last year. We made a series independently called Yappy. Five episodes starring Phil. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to say. Yeah, where is it? What, are, are we... Yeah. Benson, are we, are we working on that? Yeah? <laughs> it was a huge campaign. Um, we took it on tour. It took up like the whole year, basically. Like We're still on tour for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're, We're showing it at colleges. Going tomorrow. <laughs> So the reason why there has been no announcement for a season two yet is because we're still trying to find the best way to create it. So basically, I'll put it very bluntly. Season one was very expensive. Um, we invested all of our own money into it. We didn't want to sell it to a YouTube Red. We didn't want to sell it to a brand. So we just put all the money in ourselves so that we could have full control. And we tried to recoup that money by, you know, selling it and going on tour and all the merch. And also our care holders on Patreon, you guys basically enabled it as well with your monthly contributions. So now with the season two, we're like, do we want to go down that route, route again? Or do we want to take the first season as like a pilot presentation that we can show people like, hey, do you guys want to partner with us and um, help us make a season two. So, and it is a challenge, you know, um, I still really love what Yappy was and, and maybe there is a way we, we don't maybe do a full season, but we kind of wrap it up, Yeah, you know? Like a lot of you guys enjoyed the series and like are always commenting, asking for season two or what the status is. And we, we definitely want to continue that story and, and the characters' stories and explore more voices in the community through Yappy. But right now we don't really have a way to do that or have a final destination for it. So. We're, we're talking about different options, one of them being us continuing to tell that story on yeah. our channel, but maybe just wrapping it out. Or maybe we, you know, crowdfund it from you guys, and if you guys really want it, then we can just like, you know, mm -hmm. just already have you guys get on board, you know? So we're thinking about it, we're talking about it. We'll try to make a decision very soon. Yeah. It's also because like, that show had such a huge cliffhanger that <laughs> yeah. like, compared to all the other shows that we didn't continue, right. Yaffe didn't have an ending. Yeah, what's gonna happen to Kalina and Andrew? <laughs> it made it feel like it was the next season was already, already written, right? Another question that we often get is what happened to Ted? Um, Ted actually moved to New York. He's happily living with his wife there and their two cats. Um, and he's actually focused on his own companies that are helping to create and sell uh, products for other brands. Yeah. So Ted might not be here physically on the channel, but he's still always part of the Wong Fu family. His spirit's still here. So um, hopefully that finally answers that question yeah. for you guys. I know that we haven't talked about it that much on this channel. We've talked about it a bunch, mm -hmm. like on a, in events, yeah. on the second channel and stuff. As you can see, we're pushing the second channel pretty hard right now, guys. <laughs> a lot of things happen on the second channel. But like I said, he's in New York, so I know a lot of you guys bump into him there. So if you see him, say hi. You know, he is very open to that. Would love to talk to you guys. You can follow him on Instagram at TedFu and uh, just say hi to him there. I feel uh, lighter, even though I just ate, but <laughs> we got a lot of it's, information. Um, it's one of those catch-ups you have with friends, like oh, yeah. when you haven't seen them for a long time. Yeah. And it's like after you were away for on a long trip and then you're like, so what's been up? Yeah. You know? And it's usually over lunch. It's always oh, over lunch. True, true. This has it's been perfect. a perfect, perfect episode. You heard us answer a lot of the most frequently asked questions on this lunch break, and we want to answer more of them in future episodes. So comment below with some questions you have for our team, advice, anything, and we'll start a new segment on lunch break called Q&A. Oh, like uh, at the yeah, end of every- be a better name than that, but yes. So <laughs> To wrap things up, we have a couple quick announcements. Um, not only is this a brand new set, you know, a brand new vibe to lunch break, but we're also going to be releasing uh, each episode as a podcast. We're gonna take the audio uh, and we're just gonna, you know, make it available for you guys. Yes, we're also doing a podcast, but this is not like as, like, you know, it's not like the other podcasts. We're just giving you guys another way to consume lunch break. The podcast is actually gonna be uncut. Uh, so you actually might get even more information. So be sure to follow the links below to find out where to download the Lunch Break podcast. Um, well, all this is gonna be happening on the second channel, so be sure to subscribe to More Wong Fu. As you can tell from the name, it's just gonna be More Wong Fu over there. We've talked a lot about things we've done and ways you can help us, and two of those things are our Patreon. 
uh, Wang Fu Forward, and also our store, wangfustore.com, where we have our originally designed merch for you guys. Those two things really help us, you know, keep the lights on and keep production going. So yeah, check out the links below so you can see how you can get more uh, directly involved with Wang Fu to help us make better videos and series like Dating After College. Episode one comes out next week, April 24th. Mark your calendars. Seven episodes coming out. Uh, we've been working on this for months now. Um, and uh, yeah, if you guys enjoy series from Wang Fu, uh, this is the next big one from us. Can't wait for you guys to see it. New episodes of Lunch Break every Thursday on the second channel. And uh, we'll see you guys next Thursday, all right? All right bye. bye.